Are we ready? Yeah, we can. Is that all right? <clears throat> all right. So um, I'm going to create a little chaos here. Um, we've been through a very intensive mental day, lots of information, especially in the last. Uh, Ray really uh, was very generous with us in the last one and a half hour. So I usually like when I do a presentation to include a part of uh, experience of the light. So there's a projector here that I brought, which is uh, one of my latest uh, creations. And I'm going to use it to uh, project light patterns that are directly related to the, uh, the presentation that we have today, which is on lateral light therapy. So we'll talk about it, and you'll be able to experience it directly and feel uh, the effects. Um, now, lateral light therapy, the name itself indicates it. It works with laterality. It works with both sides of our visual system. And in order for it to work properly, it has to cover both sides of your field of vision. <clears throat> now, if you look at the size of this screen, inside your field of vision, it's pretty small, just a small proportion of it. So if I project light patterns there, they won't have much laterality effects. The only way they will manage to have is if you come much closer. So whoever wants to experience um, to the fullest these light patterns, I would um, suggest that you take your chair and bring it uh, very close to the front. Yes, close enough so that when you look at the screen, it kind of covers as much as possible of your field of view. So it's optional, whoever is. Uh... Yes, we're going to start with that now. Yes, yes. Yeah, right. Th those who want to. Uh to give it, give it a try, now is the time. <clears throat> I told you I was going to bring a little chaos here. All right, we have a few uh, brave experimenters here coming all the way straight at the front. So what I will do is uh, present you a, little, a short little uh, sequence of about four minutes uh, with a specific light pattern, a specific combination of colors. And I won't tell you beforehand what it's supposed to be doing. And we'll see afterwards if anybody has any impressions of what, how it acted on their nervous system. Uh, you can take your glasses off, actually. It's, it, it's, there's nothing... Um, to see specifically, they're just blobs of light. And um, personally, I prefer to look at them without glasses. All right, so I guess we're uh, ready to start. We need, uh, John, you can uh, switch off the lights. So this is going to last about four minutes. Um, there's nothing specific to understand about it. It's just... Uh, looking at the light, letting the light come inside and feeling what it does inside you. Yes, of course, sound is, um, acts as a kind of catalyst to the effect of the light. 
And um, like I'll be showing you two sequences in, in the presentation, but I use the same music in both cases so that the music doesn't um, bias the effect. But in a little while, I'll be showing you another pattern with a different combination of colors. And the, I'll just be interested to see if, if you perceive them differently. Uh, but before we do that, let's take a little break to, um, I don't want to give you the second light sequence right away. So we start talking a bit just to let the eyes and the visual system uh, readapt. Um, actually, I was thinking of using the projector while I do that, but I guess now you're sitting in front of it. So I won't get into the, um, I won't spill the secret until we've seen both light patterns. So just for a few minutes, I'll, I'll um, talk about more general things and introduce the, the subject. Uh, when we talk about lateral light, the, uh, it's based on a, f on a phenomenon that I'm sure most of you are well aware of. Uh, it's it's the, um, the optic chiasm. Is that the way you pronounce it, chiasm? Chiasm? All right, thanks. Um, as you know very well, we, um, the visual fields of each of our eye uh, get split. The optic nerve tract gets split in the optical chiasm. So that, chiasm? What can you chiasm. Chiasm, all right. <laughs> uh, so that, what comes to our, each of our uh, the, the visual centers in each left and right brain hemispheres is actually a combination of part of the visual field of each eye. And the way it's mixed is that what you get to the left brain hemisphere is the right part of the visual field of both eyes and vice versa. So what we're trying to do with lateral light is to play with the laterality, the, the separation of the the brain, the two hemispheres, and, and the two visual centers um, connected to each hemisphere. So if we want to do that with an external light source, we have to f bring, uh, separate the light uh, source of the whole uh, visual field. So it's not enough just to bring a certain color into one eye and another color into the other eye. You actually have to split the color field so that each eye gets the different colors so that they recombine when they, when they reach the left and right hemisphere, they actually contain only the color that you want on each half. And um, I was just wondering this morning, um, we were talking about the nascent, nascentization, is that how you say it? Where you use blue on one eye and red on the other one. Um, probably you could make that much more effective by splitting the field so that you actually have red going to the one hemisphere and blue to the other hemisphere. And you won't achieve that if you simply have the uniform color on each eye because you lose, I think it's about 75% uh, is on one side is, goes to the opposite hemisphere. So you'll kind of cancel out half of the, the effect you're trying to achieve. So in order to play with the laterality of the visual center, you need to have devices of different type. Either you work with clothes um, uh, near field devices such as this one here um, they call them filat glasses where they split the light field in two and then they can put different color filters on each side if you do that then you will achieve what you're trying to do you will actually have one hemisphere fully um, illuminated with one color and the other with the different color so that's one way of doing it. Um, another way of doing it, if you're working large scale, is to project different spots of colors. And again, that will work only if the um, proportion of the, the screen you're looking at is large compared to your field of view, so that really the left part of your field of view is illuminated with a color and the right part with a different color. That's why I had you come closer here. If you're at the back and you look at these two colors, they're merged in your central field of view, 
and then you, you cannot get the lateral effect on the brain. Um, and the reason I got interested in this type of um, light patterns is that um, I've been working for a long time with uh, light projection devices uh, which are ideally suited to, the, um, to working with different colors in different parts of the um, projection area. Um, this is an image of the kind of installation I work with. Uh, if you can see here is a chair, a reclining chair, and, and this is a very large screen. It's about 10, 11 feet diameter. And it's installed in such a way that the person lying there gets pretty much his or her field of view covered. So the person is immersed in the field of light, basically. And the projectors that I use have multiple light sources, uh, usually five independent light sources, which means that I can create light patterns with different colors in different parts of the visual field. And I've been doing, it this, uh, doing this for a long time before I heard of this particular research we're talking about today, this lateral light uh, research. So I was particularly fascinated when I found out about this, that um, the, the kind of intuition that we had been working with from the beginning um, could be translated into a cl very concrete uh, clinical results. And so the way we use the light patterns are not necessarily always focusing one color on one side and another color on the other side, but we can easily adapt the system to do that. And that's what we, we're doing today. Um, this just briefly, um, what I work with is, is more multi-sensorial environments. So the light projectors is what we've just seen here. I also like to work with sound, which, as I just mentioned, uh, acts as a powerful catalyst. Whenever you're looking at light, if you have music at the same time, it kind of um, it enhances receptivity, puts you in a more receptive space, and the light can come in much deeper in that, that combination. I also work with uh, kinesthetic vibration, the physical aspect, through um, these chairs here that have arrays of sound transducers that convert the sound into low-frequency kinesthetic um, vibrations. And again, there, the, the, there's a processor that moves that um, resonance in patterns across the chair. And you can work with different patterns, different frequencies. Um, so it's um, kind of... Uh, it goes in a similar direction to the, um, the vestibular motion uh, tables. Um, but there's no movement, but you create um, a physical kinesthetic uh, movement across the skin. Um, all right, so I guess we've had a few minutes distraction, and now we can move on to the second light pattern. We will, uh, I'll ask to close the lights again. Right, so another few minutes of this lateral light.
No, not, uh, no. So now we can get into the actual details of the subject. And um, so the, the, the presentation is specifically about the research of um, a Russian uh, psychiatrist. And um, it's based, as I was uh, mentioning, on brain laterality. Um, so we all know what these two hemispheres are doing. Left hemisphere associated to, and these are all, of course, broad uh, qualities. Uh, we, we know that each hemisphere is, is it's much more complex than that, but these broad qualities remain. Uh, the associations remain valid uh, for many purposes. Left hemisphere uh, related to the uh, thinking, verbal um, capabilities. These are actually the words of this uh, Russian uh, psychiatrist here. And um, what we can add is that its activation is usually associated with the increase of the sympathetic uh, tonus. Right hemisphere, the opposite. It's more internal, figurative cognition of surrounding worlds, supplies relaxation and grief component in emotional spectrum, and its activity increases the parasympathetic um, tonus. So this researcher is called um, Chuprikov, and um, this research has been conducted, I think, since the 1990s, uh, up to up till now. And uh, I don't know if uh, has anybody here ever heard of, of his work? No. Huh? And, uh, mm -hmm. It could be related. The, the trouble with this research is that it only exists in Russian. And there's a number of papers published, but all in Russian journals. And uh, there's so little communication. And the, the only reason why a um, few people are becoming aware of it is that um, a few people like Mary Ross and, and uh, uh, Francis, um, who probably some of you know, um, have taken care to have those articles translated. They paid the students to translate it out of their own pockets. And uh, they, they got many of the articles translated and they, they graciously uh, gave copies. And actually they're, they're willing to share these articles with whoever is interested. So this uh, Dr. Chuprikov, this is his basic um, statement here. The main principle of lateral therapy is the directed transformation of an individual's profile of interhemispheric interactions by suppressing the hemisphere with the pathological determinant and activating the opposite hemisphere. So bear in mind that he's a psychiatrist. He's working with uh, uh, psychiatric disorders, neurological disorders. So his vocabulary is very much uh, related to that, um, uh, that field. So we know that we have the two brain hemispheres, uh, left and right, e each with its different worlds. And now how do we suppress and activate them? Well, guess what? Colors. <laughs> and we all know this is pretty universal that the red, yellow, orange range is stimulating and the green, blue, violet range is sedating. So now you have these uh, two components, left, right hemisphere, and then one color to stimulate, one color to uh, sedate. So the combinations are, are pretty obvious. And what he works with is what he calls two types of effects, the direct and the reverse effect. And the direct effect is when you stimulate the left hemisphere, which is more the, the mental active part, with the active color red and, and, or, or similar. And while you sedate the right hemisphere, the quiet hemisphere, with uh, sedating colors. So it's a direct. You just encourage each side into its own nature. And reverse is the opposite. You switch back. You stimulate the right hemisphere. You sedate the left hemisphere. And uh, so it's an extremely simple principle. And the, the, um, the interesting thing is that he he pushed its study pretty far and he's been using it um, in all kinds of um, pathologies and he's been getting results. So the 
main properties is the direct effect, uh, psychostimulant, elevation of mood, emotional tonus, increase in speed of thinking, decrease length and deepness of night's sleep, um, ease morning awakening, and it's more linked to extroversion. Reverse effect, the opposite, psycholeptic, decrease in emotional tonus, speed of thinking, decreased motivation, ease is falling asleep, so it can help with in insomnia and so on, increases length of sleep, and it um, enhances introversion. So when you use these two colors illuminating the two hemispheres, you go into the creation of lateralized dominance in the occipital area. He, um, he talks about psycho psychotropic strength. Psycho the strength of psychotropic effect of the color pair increases as the difference of the frequencies between the two increases. So if you have the rainbow spectrum here, you'll get maximum effect if you take colors at opposite ends of the spectrum. So on one side, uh, for example, the violet, violet colors, and on the other side, the red and orange colors. So you maximize the difference. And he finds that these patterns are the ones which, which will have the greatest impact, a psychotropic impact. Medium effects, combi combining red-green, so you go further on, on that side, the green and red, and or yellow-violet, you shift, but you reduce the distance between the pair. Minimal effect for yellow and green, so yes, more um, weaker patterns with a s smaller difference between the pair of colors. Um, these are the various fields of application where he's been experimenting. Um, selective effects on syndromes, creating reductions of predominantly right hemispheric or predominantly left hemispheric uh, clinical phenomena. So as we, as we will see later, he, he classifies various uh, clinical disorders, uh, psychiatric disorders, as related to as right hemispheric or left hemispheric. And according to his grid, if he has a patient which has a right hemispheric type of pathology, he will therefore um, adjust his light uh, pattern pairs uh, accordingly. The method is, is used in a number of psychological somatoform disorders of neurotic and hypopsychotic registers. Again, <laughs> his words. Uh, um, he uses them, of course, in his psychiatric uh, um, treatment, but also to overcome therapeutic resistance in treatment of neurotic disorders. So he won't rely essentially on this slide, but he will use it to enhance or overcome resistance in standard treatments. Modulation of perception in psychotherapy and psychopharmacology. Again, he will use it, use these light patterns as adjuncts to other therapies. Optimization of psychological state of healthy individuals. So he's also using it, um, he also finds it has applications for healthy individuals, not only for pathologies. And that's what we, we just observed ourselves now, that even for healthy individuals, uh, these light patterns can be used for uh, certain purposes. Um, I found this very interesting. The, the, he defines um, different effects according to the, uh, the time frame. So what he finds is that within two, three hours after the application of lateral light patterns, He's, he has what he calls non-specific psychotropic effects. And he, he sees that this translates as uh, calmness, sleepiness, decrease in motivation, tempo of thinking. So it's non-specific in the sense that he gets similar effects for both the direct and the reverse patterns. So short term, people perceive them as being mostly relaxing and, and bringing calm. They, they don't differentiate them so clearly. but. Um, after, within 24 hours, or less often two, three days, what he calls the lateral specific psychotropic effects start to show up. So it's after a while, the particular pattern that he used will start to show up is its lateral effect, psycholeptic or psychostimulant. So there's a kind of immediate effect, 
you feel something is happening, but it's not so clear what. And after a while, the, the, um, the deeper effects come in. And what he's looking for, of course, are long-term therapeutic effects. He's hoping that these light patterns will actually bring long-term change in the, the person's, uh, uh, what he calls, modification of features of patient's cognitive style. Also, he defines um, different therapeutic settings according to the intensity of the light. And again, this ties uh, very nicely with many things we heard uh, today. Uh, so low levels under 200 lux, which is, uh, as Ed was measuring, pretty much the level uh, where the syntonic instruments work, low level light. Uh, so he says these will create specific, uh, lateral specific effects after one to five minutes of uh, illumination. The effect reaches a maximum after 15, 30 minutes and then transforms into an, a relaxing non-specific effect after 40 to 50 minutes. So this pattern will have a strong lateral effect for the first minutes, but if you keep on uh, presenting it for a, a long time, um, past 40 or 50 minutes, uh, the system gets kind of saturated and you only get this non-specific non general relaxing effect. So, of course, he keeps his treatments usually in the 15 to 30 minutes range, which he found were the, uh, the sweet spot, the maximum effect. And another very interesting uh, feature here, he determines the, uh, the time of the treatment Again, not by a rule of thumb uh, recipe, but by a, um, he sees when the subject starts seeing the disappearance of the subjective perception of these two colors. If you look at these two separate color patterns for quite a long time, after a certain amount of time, you feel as if the colors are kind of merging. You, you, the, the, the difference between them decreases. So that takes quite a while, as we say here. Um, we would, here we had only four minutes, so we didn't go into that kind of phenomenon at all. But if you look for half an hour or more, you get into these, uh, the, the, the brain kind of adapts to each color, cancels them out, and you, you just don't perceive so clearly the color difference. So he times his sessions according to when the subject starts to feel that, that kind of reduction in, in color difference, he knows that now he's reached the maximum effect possible, and, and that's the duration of the, the, the session. When he works with um, medium-range light sources, two, 200 to 2,500 lux, um, actually just uh, it, he uses this for most treatments. Uh, this mid-range here he will use for more extreme cases, so it's more powerful, more intense. Um, but he says you have to do it for a short time only, less than 10 minutes, otherwise what happens is that the brain uh, uh, reacts against it, kind of, kind of cancels out the, uh, the effect, stops being receptive. So you have decreased activation of both hemispheres, clinically reflected as deep relaxation. So if you have these high level, higher uh, intensities, if you do it too long, pretty quickly the brain adapts and you, you don't get the lateral effect anymore. So for, the, for these higher intensities, he uses shorter time exposition and he uses them for uh, um, more extreme, uh, stronger effects. Then when you go into very high intensities, um, relatively speaking, up to 8,000 lux, um, lateral effect forms very quickly. But another strange phenomenon, he, he sees that after three, five minutes, it is inverted. The stimulated hemisphere has a strong inhibition. The suppressed hemisphere has increased biological activation. So there again, the brain reacts to the strong stimuli. Not only it stops um, perceiving a difference, but it actually inverts the perception. So he normally doesn't use these um, uh, strong light levels because he finds that the lateral specific psychotropic effect is lost. So now, uh, the color ranges he uses, he, he defines, these are all kinds of uh, disorder types. 
so he, he defines which color pairs are most appropriate to each particular um, disorder. Again, the wider color range for uh, stronger effects, for milder problems, um, smaller color uh, difference. And we won't get into all these details, but I just put this here to show you that he, so he defines protocols for, he has a whole list of different syndromes, so he will determine whether you apply the direct or the reverse pattern. He will determine the, um, the, color, the color pair and the length of application, the number of sessions. So you see he uses 5 to 10, 20 to 25 sessions, so it's, it's a long-term process. It doesn't happen in one single session. But um, he has this whole protocol worked out. And the interesting thing is that um, they have actually done uh, quite a bit of a clinical validation of the effects of this over uh, uh, many years. Uh, many of the articles here are like from around 2000, 2001. They probably are later ones, but that's the extent of the literature that uh, Mary managed to get. And they've, they've been applying this light treatment to uh, quite a wide variety of, uh, of um, subjects. Uh, for example, uh, I'll just go through these studies. A modification of the EEG activity upon lateralized stimulation of the visual inputs. So they've, been, they've done measures of EEG activity. Uh, then they've made a study on um, treating hypertension with lateral light. They've done a study on treating rheumatoid arthritis with lateral light. So very different. So now it's really it's not not a psychiatric treatment anymore. It's really a physical treatment, and so they they get results from lateral light on on this type of um, of problem also. Uh, another study in hypertension here. Another study where they use HRV, art, art um, red variability, as a, a way to measure the effects of lateral light. So, again, the, the studies cover depression, hypertension, heart rhythm problems, arthritis, drug addiction, and alcoholism, all fields where they've been using this light therapy. Um, so it's quite remarkable that they, they, they went quite far ahead with this, and uh, we heard very little about it over here. The methods that they used for the, the clinical research I also found um, interesting. For example, in some studies, they um, use excretion of um, catecholamines or, or um, various hormones uh, through urine collected before and after light stimulation. They use measurements of arterial pressure. They use electrocardiograms, heart rate variability. They use uh, pain and inflammatory indexes for the arthritis studies. And then they also use statistical comparison of treatment length and decrease in remission. So especially for um, psychiatric treatments, so they can statistically assess uh, comparing standard treatment with treatment with lateral light, how, if it goes faster and if it lasts longer and if there's a decrease in remission and so on. Um, when I, I, I looked to try to find references to this work, and I, I came upon uh, a patent that Trupikov, um, a U.S. patent that he... Um, applied for in 1992 and that he got. The patent is on method of treating the emotional condition of, of an individual. So it's really focused on using light as a um, treatment for, for emotion, um, emotion related conditions. And we won't go through, of course, the, the patent, but uh, again, you see here the, the basic idea, the optic chiasm, the um, his light uses goggles, actually. All of these studies uh, are using uh, the goggles, uh, not the large screen projection, because it's much easier to use in a clinical setting 
than these uh, the large scale projections. Um, although the large scale projections I find much more uh, beautiful and entertaining, so when you can manage to use those, it's much more fun. Um, so this is the abstract of the uh, the patent. The treatment action is applied at least once until the subjective sensation of a difference in color disappears. Again, this idea that he, he um, waits to see when the patient stops perceiving the difference in color. Um, how are we doing with time? Well, it's nearly the end. Um, that was actually a, a, that was basically what I would wanted to present you um, let me see here if we can come back to something ah yes the um, so again the, the, the theory of this uh, has been created by the Dr. Chuprikov, but another doctor that seems to be working very actively in this field is Dr. Palienkov. He's uh, at uh, Kiev University in, in Ukraine. And also, uh, m well, most of the cl clinical studies we found were performed by him. So I assume he's probably a student of Chuprikov or a colleague. And we've been trying to get in touch with this Dr. Palienkov, uh, in fact, to, to um, invite him to the, uh, an upcoming conference by, of the International Light Association. And uh, it's been difficult to reach. We, we need to find somebody who can speak Russian so that we can contact the Kiev University. So we, we are working on it. And, uh, well, I guess I would leave it at that for now. Questions? Yeah. No, they don't. They, they mention pulsing in some of the articles, but they, um, the method is not based on pulsing. So I guess most of the clinical tests mentioned here don't use pulsing. He has explored that aspect as well. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. So the two light patterns that we looked at, um, we, we didn't come back on that. So the first one was a direct pattern and the second one was a reverse pattern. And so it's interesting to see that the majority of people perceived the second one as more relaxing, more soothing, easier, while the first one, um, I mean, if you compare them, is more stimulating, more energizing. And that's exactly what they were designed to do. Uh, actually, the first one was a more a softer one, less of a polarity, because it was green and orange, <clears throat> so the two colors were fairly close. And the second one was pretty much uh, uh, close to the maximum effect, because it was red and blue. So the, with, just within four minutes, um, many of, of us did get this um, strong differentiation between these two types of patterns. All right.